record. I thought I was recording that whole time. Unbelievable. I'll take like a minute of this. Let's go, man. Dude, Sydney loves Jolyn, bro. She like, she always wants to sleep over at your place. <laughs> And she keeps Have saying. Have you seen the movie, the new movie, uh, yeah. uh, Disney movie? Raya. Raya. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Sydney saw it though. She she went with some relatives to watch okay. it. Did you see it? Yeah, because one of the girls looked like Sydney, and the other one oh, looks like Raya. Oh wow! Like Asians. <laughs> no, no, I mean seriously. Seriously. They, they look like when they grew up. Wow, that's hilarious. That's their story. I've never helped take care of someone who was blind. I didn't know this, but this is what was going on with Bobby. So Bobby would be walking around and he would get these cuts on his feet and his feet would start to bleed. And they would mix with the sweat of his feet and they would mix with the dirt of the ground and the dirt on the inside. And then he would take those two feet and he would put them back inside his shoes and he'd keep walking around. And my co-caster Brian and I, we realized that Bobby's feet were getting progressively more smelly. More and more smelly. So we, it got to the point that what we were going to do is we had to take two fingers and very carefully grab Bobby's feet, or Bobby's shoes, and we would put his shoes outside because they would stink up the whole cabin. It was unbearable. And when you would put his shoes outside, you go ahead and go wash your hand two, three times to get the smell somewhat removed from your hand. Because all of that blood, that sweat, that dirt would be mixed together and caked on his feet, and it would all kind of get there. And so I was starting to get really frustrated with Bobby because I would see him without his shoes and I'd say, Bobby, you know you can't be walking around here without your shoes. Please put your shoes on. Stop doing that. And Bobby would say, okay, go get his shoes on. And then 20 minutes later, Bobby had his shoes off and he was walking around, feeling everything and having a good time, trying to socialize with everybody. By the, I think the fourth or fifth day, Bobby started to complain and he would come and say, hey, my feet are hurting. My feet are hurting. Can you take a look? And let me be honest. I'm not Dr. Chan. I said, I do not want to take a look. I didn't say this, but in my mind, I said, I don't want to look at your feet, Bobby. They smell bad. I don't want to go look at them. I don't want to get close to them. I want to actually keep my distance from you because it's very difficult to put up with the smell. And so then I went and I got the camp nurse and she came over to our cabin and she kind of took a look at Bobby's feet and she says, he, and this is when I found out that he had been bleeding. And she says, he has multiple cuts and he's got dirt and he's got sweat and we need to clean it out right away so that it does not get infected so he doesn't have a work problem down the road. And I said to myself, man, okay, you're a nurse you're gonna take care of it. But she was a smart nurse and she said, since you're his counselor, you have to do this. <laughs> she says, I actually brought everything you need. She brought out this, this, you know what's funny? Is she brought out this thing that kind of looked like the, the, the foot washing bins that we use at church. <laughs> she pulled that out and she put some stuff in there that was gonna help clean everything up and, and make sure things were disinfected. And she grabbed that and she put it under his feet and she said, wash his feet, Byron. And I was upset. I was angry. I said, this is not what I imagined. I did not imagine that I was gonna be washing this 55 year old man's feet because oh, he man. was reckless. He was reckless. He, in, he knew he was gonna get cut. He knew he was getting hurt. Yet he chose to walk around barefoot. That was his decision, not mine. Why should I have to wash his feet? And this is one of the moments, one of the few handful of moments in my life where God spoke and it was clear. And he said, Byron, <laughs> do you not realize that your sin smells worse to me than this man's feet smell to you? Mm -hmm. 
Do you not realize that you walk in sin constantly, knowing that you walk in sin, and yet I choose to get on my knees and wash your feet? Do you not remember, Byron, that once upon a time there was a room and a place where I got on my feet, the king, the God of the universe, and I washed the feet of the disciples because I was bringing about a kingdom that was going to be different than anything that we've seen on this earth. Yeah. We're going to be seeing a kingdom where in order to be the greatest, we have to be the least. In order for us to be good in this kingdom, we have to be humble. And you cannot let the things that other people do, even though they're making those decisions, you cannot let those things stop you from loving them. You cannot let that happen. You see, brothers and sisters, here is the problem with what's going on right now. That right now, Right now, we are living in very crucial, unprecedented times in this world's history. We are. And there will be people that might say, hey, this has happened before, but that's not true. And in these very unprecedented times, we are called to be part of the kingdom of God, to allow people glimpses into heaven by the way that we choose to engage those around us. But the problem is that we get caught up with all the you did this and you did that and you said this. We are starting to fall into the idolatry of partisanship. Before you were a Republican, before you were a Democrat, before you were an independent, you were a child of God. Before you were Cambodian, before I'm Ecuadorian, before I'm a psychologist, I am a child of God. Before you're Seventh-day Adventist, you are a child of God. And if you claim to be a child of God, you need to reach out across to the people that say hurtful things. You need to reach out to the people that do hurtful things. You need to reach out to the people that completely and utterly disagree with you and they mock you for whatever belief you have. You need to reach out across that aisle and you need to say, I love you, not because of me, but because once upon a time, there was a man who died on Golgotha. He put his hands up and he gave his life when he did not have to do that. God did not have to come into this world to do this for us, but he chose to do that. And let me tell you something, if we are incapable, and I'm telling you that I struggle, the fact that I'm speaking this message is not because I have arrived or achieved perfection in this area. This is a message that God has for me because I, I struggle with it. I struggle to love the people that do things that hurt me. I struggle to do the things that people that hurt hurt. So I struggle to love the people that do things to those who look like me, okay? So whether you're on the side of all lives matter or blue lives matter or whatever matters, you remember that what you are is a catalyst. You are called to be in the middle. You are called to unite. You are called to be part of the reconciliation between God's people and each other. We are in this country and sometimes we get lost and we think that because we're in this country, in my relationship with God, yes, it's important. And yes, is what helps to fuel and drive everything else. But if we think that all we are called to do is simply have a relationship with God, we have missed the gospel. We have missed it. Because God came into this earth and he trained his disciples and he taught them. And he said, you learn and then you go to the ends of the earth and you take this message of love to the ends of the earth. That is what we are called to do. The cross has two axes, the horizontal, the one between us and God, and the, one that's the, the, the horizontal one that's between us and our fellow brothers and sisters. And that is what we're called to do. There was a theologian by the name of Justo Gonzalez who wrote a story about a black slave in the Caribbean who had just been freed. And right after he was freed, he encountered the gospel and it gripped him, it convicted him, it converted him to, the, to be a follower of Christ. But something that he was really struggling with was this concept that the Bible says that we have to be a slave. We have to submit to God, we have to be a slave. And he was wrestling with it. And he finally came to the conclusion that helped him to reconcile what that meant. He said, if we are called to be a slave of God, then love has to be the brand that we bear. Let me say that again. If we are going to be followers of Christ, the brand that we wear as bond servants to God has to be the love that we have. A love that we have for everybody, regardless of how they are, regardless of how they treat us regardless of what their positions are. Let the past city and the Seventh Day Adventist Church be a place where people come, regardless of where they are in their walk with God, regardless of their political positions, regardless of their social positions. 
economic, financial ideologies. Let them come and meet equally at the foot of the cross with those of us that are in Pasadena who will love them regardless of where they come from, who will love them regardless of the hurtful things that they say, because that's what it means to be a follower of God. There's a, there's a passage, uh, passage of scripture that we have. It's uh, actually because, you know, uh, Dr. Chan, Matthew Chan is the one that's kind of organizing this. I have to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar first. Go reconcile to them, then come offer your gift. What that tells us is that we are not allowed access to God, to his altar, if we have these things that we harvest in our hearts. Can you hear me, brothers and sisters? If we have sin in our hearts by holding contempt, holding anger, holding bitterness to those around us, whoever they may be, even if they're someone within our family, we are not allowed access to the throne of God. And that is something that I have to take myself very seriously because I struggle. I have a very good memory which makes me remember all the times that people wronged me. All the times that people said or did things that were very hurtful to me. I remember those things. Look, and if you're listening to this message and you're like, well, there's no one really that I need to forgive or no group that I'm holding a grudge to, ask God's spirit to shine his light and he will show you the people or the group or the person that it is that you need to love like God loves you. So my call, my ask, my question, my desire and from the bottom of my heart is that you today make a decision to actively seek out in your heart and ask God's spirit to look into our hearts and find the things that we need to surrender to God because if we cannot do it here, it's not going to work in heaven. We're not going to be able to get to heaven and be on the Republican or the Democratic side of heaven. It's everybody together. And if we can't coexist in the church here today, it's not going to happen over there. So pray. Ask God to help our church. Ask God to help you to seek your heart and surrender whatever that is to God and show you the way to love so that we may be reconcilers, so that we may be lovers of the people that surround us, despite the things that we are encountering in these very unprecedented times. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us uh, bow our heads and close with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for your love, for your compassion, for the fact that you find and meet us in nature. Thank you, God, that you came and you washed us, Father, despite our volitional sins, despite our ignorance of sin despite the fact that we are still in process of sanctification god you continue to come and meet us and join us and allow us to worship you during these sabbath hours you are god please father send your spirit to clean us to show us the places the things that we need to surrender to you so that when the time of trouble comes we will hold fast because there will be nothing holding us here on this earth father god we ask these things in your name we pray. Amen. 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 God, how many blessed us so far? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Brian. Very, very nice. So, um, you may continue hiking down the trail if you'd like, uh, or just hang out here. The trail goes on for another three or four miles that way, and there's a nice little dam with a waterfall over there if you want to hang out over there. That's cool, too. But otherwise, thank you all for coming, and God bless and have a happy Sabbath. Amen. Amen.